Hello again, Sunny Hills Church and all those visiting with us from social media. Uh, it's Friday and we are finishing up our series on the Beatitudes. Um, we, we began with Blessed are the poor in spirit and for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And now we are at the eighth one, which says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So both the beginning and the end of this block of scriptures talks about uh, the kingdom of heaven, experiencing the kingdom of heaven. Now I want to say that to start off, uh, and I can't remember if I said this in the first one or not, but when we're talking about experiencing the kingdom of heaven, it, it doesn't mean he's saying, blessed are these people because they're going to go to heaven. And he's not saying they're not going to go to heaven. <laughs> it's just going to heaven is not in view here. Blessed are the, the, the poor in spirit because that will be the beginning of a way to experience and live in the kingdom of heaven, in the rule of God. It's not about going to heaven, about heaven coming here. It is That's what it's about. And so... We begin our walk with God by recognizing we have no life, no spiritual life. We are poor in spirit. Um, and therefore, we're looking to God and wanting that relationship. And so, so that's the beginning of the experiencing the kingdom of heaven. And so then we went through them, and maybe uh, you can recite them with me by now and, and, and see if we know them. Uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. We talked about mourning for sin that has caused us to lose that relationship with God. So blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Uh, when we approach God and we've, we've decided that it's sin that's keeping us from experiencing a relationship with God, then it requires us to be meek to... Uh, it's not that we don't have the power of our will. We do. We just have to be willing to submit our will to God and, uh, and let him be Lord of our lives. And so blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Um, having this relationship with God and, and tasting that the Lord is good, we, we desire, we want to be more like Jesus. We, we want to be filled with his righteousness. And, and God does that. He fills us with his righteousness. And not only does he credit us with his righteousness, but then by leading us in our lives, he leads us into all uh, good things in righteousness. And then blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And we saw that we become merciful when we've experienced the mercy of God. And, and therefore, we show mercy as a result of having experienced mercy. And those are the people ultimately that will receive mercy because that God can see that he has had an impact on our lives, that his mercy has moved us to be merciful to others. And then blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And we talked about how the cathar catharos, the, the catharsis is where we get our word, but the cleansing, that we get that from Jesus. He cleanses us uh, in, in many ways, but through the washing of water, through the word, through forgiveness, through the, the filling with the Holy Spirit. He He makes us clean and 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 so then we become more and more clean more and more pure in heart um and then blessed are those uh the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god and and that was last week and we saw that when when we take the gospel out to others and we become those ambassadors for christ that are that are reaching out with this message be reconciled to god and that God made him who had no sin to be sin so that we might become his righteousness. When, when that's us, when we're bringing that message to a lost world, uh, some people are going to be saved. And, and so we are involved in the work of God to create peace, to bring peace between man and God, to reconcile humanity to his creator. Um, that was last week. Well, the thing about it is, when, when, when we go out with the word of God, just like Jesus... Not everybody is going to accept it. Not everybody likes it. And so some people are going to reject it. And when they do, this happens. Uh, we may end up being treated just like Jesus. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody's going to want to hear about Jesus. Not everyone's going to want to submit to Jesus. Not every, And not everyone's going to want us to. They're, they might get mad at us for that. And in many places in the world today, it's still like that. 
If you call on the name of Jesus, they might kill you for that. Some people have died for that, many. And, um, and so this is, this is the full range of, or the, the full journey of what it is to be a Christian from the beginning to maturity. And, and that, that uh, being persecuted can come right away as soon as a person starts living their faith and owning their faith and, and sharing their faith. Some people are going to say yes, but others are going to say no. And there will be uh, persecution. If they treated Jesus like that, that, surely they're going to treat us like that as well. Some people will. Um, so I can see that I'm getting a shadow off this light over here. I'm sorry about that. What I want to say is uh, we may see more persecution in our country. Christians may see more persecution. It seems to me as as we get further and further away from the principles of our founding father, from, from understanding that uh, each person is endowed by our creator with certain in, unalienable rights and some of those being life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, um, the, the acknowledgement of God was in the founding documents and in the founding fathers. And, and as we get further and further away from that as a culture, if that's where we're going, uh, we, can, we can expect to find more persecution as we try to live our faith. But I, but I want to say this. It's, it's not always people persecuting us because we're living our faith or being like Jesus. Um, that's not always the case. Um, sometimes we bring it on ourselves because we misunderstand the way God works. We bring it on ourselves when we try to legislate the Bible, when we try to go out and, and force people, this is what God says, you have to do it, who, who haven't acknowledged faith, who haven't, who haven't come to God in faith. We, we just go out and say, this is God's way. And, and some people want to legislate it from the government. They, want, they, they think we can make America like God's kingdom by, by legislating the rules of the Bible and making everybody follow the Bible and then we'll be a good Christian nation. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you, can't, you can't legislate Christianity. It just doesn't work that way. Jesus did not go to Caesar. And, and convert Caesar in order to control the world. And, you know, it just doesn't work that way. You cannot, you cannot legislate Christianity. Following Jesus is a choice a person makes to become a disciple, to become a follower of Jesus. It, it comes from acknowledging what God has done and believing and loving God and wanting to be part of God's kingdom and part of God's work. You cannot go around and and make people follow the Bible. And but when we do that, when we when we tell people you're not following the Bible and and God's mad at you, God hates you, and and you better do it our way. When when we do that, if we're if the church is being persecuted for that spirit and that mentality, that's not being persecuted for righteousness' sake. That's being persecuted because we're off on some tangent Jesus never sent us on because we're doing things he never called us to do that he never did. Somebody said, well, Jesus, he, you know, he got mad, he turned over tables. I mean, he argued with them, he fought with them. You know, all of those scenes are Jesus and the religious establishment. It's the religious people Jesus had to behave that way too, because they were supposed to be representing God and they failed and they were, they were hurting people and, 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 and driving sinners away from God rather than drawing them to God. So yeah, yeah, Jesus, uh, he knew, was known to get animated sometimes. But look at Jesus when he was hanging out with sinners. He was accused of being one of them, eating and drinking with them. Look at Jesus with the woman at the well, divorced five times, living with a man who's not her husband. Look at Jesus there. Look at Jesus with the woman caught in the very act of adultery. No denying it. Neither do I condemn you, he says. Yeah, go your way and leave this life. It's not good for you. But but no, I didn't, I'm, I'm not standing here to condemn you. He showed her concern. He showed her love. He didn't attack her until she broke a rule. If people are gonna follow, if people want are gonna want to know about God, if they're gonna want to know the gospel, if they're gonna want to know more about Christianity, it's not because we're forcing it down their throats. It's going to be because we are loving them and serving them just like Jesus did. 
hanging out with them, eating and drinking with them, even if the religious people call us names. It's because they see we care and we want them to share in the peace and the joy and the love that we found in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And when they see that, some people will be saved and others may not want to be and we may even get some flack over that. We may even be persecuted. That's what Jesus says. But let's not get persecuted for the other stuff. Just make it our goal to love and serve him and trust God. He knows what he's doing. God bless you today. Bye-bye.